vegans are an incredibly misguided group of individuals. Fortunately, I am a very understanding person. But I went vegan for a day and it made me wonder, do these vegans go outside? Do they know where fruit grows? Have they ever been to a farm? Because in my carnivore goes vegan day of eating video, some things became very apparent. Okay guys, so this is my melon tree and I know it's like the end of winter and there's not much fruit left, but thankfully this should be enough for today. So I'm just gonna take this inside um, and then uh, we'll, we'll cut it up, okay? But this looks good. I'm just gonna put the camera down and then I'll bring this inside. Uh, but while I'm out here, I just want to get some dirt for my B12. Um, I mean, there's a little bit of snow. Uh... Now, I personally chartered a ship and scheduled some flights from several locations across the globe to have my vegan food allocated for me. Let's see if this young lady had a similar idea. If I lived in a cold climate, I would wake up and put a sweater and thick knitted socks on every morning and snuggle my kids in bed reading books under the covers every day. If I lived in a cold climate, I would drink hot chocolate every morning. Here's an easy hot chocolate recipe. Just blend 8 medjool dates with boiling water and 2 heaping tablespoons of cacao powder. The conventional wisdom that fruit is good for you really makes it appear that these vegans aren't just complete sugar addicts. Imagine if she just dumped a cup of sugar in that hot chocolate in the morning. That's essentially what she's doing. It's just disguised in the form of a date. And there's obviously no significant nutrition to anything she's consuming outside of calories. Bam, healthy hot chocolate. So warm and delicious. If I lived in a cold climate, I would make warm oatmeal for breakfast. This particular morning, I was halfway short the amount of oats that I wanted to eat. So uh, just pretend I'm eating double the amount for what I would eat in a cold climate. Instead, I ate a papaya on the side. I know, I caved. That's not typical towards what you would eat in a cold climate, but we were low on oats, so just pretend I'm eating double the amount that you're seeing here. Then add your favorite toppings. I added fresh dates, which you can order online to be shipped to your door during date season. Just Google search a few fresh date companies to find out which one they like. Or you can get regular dates from your local health shop at the bulk section. I also added sliced banana and you can dice up apples instead or whatever you prefer. Then I add one tablespoon of maple syrup, a dash of cinnamon, frozen berries, and one tablespoon of ground flax seeds. I guess I was a little optimistic in hoping this was going to be a realistic vegan day of eating. You know, she was going to eat oats for every single meal because the only calorie that you could procure for months and months ahead of time would be a grain-based food. Instead, here we are shipping in bananas from Central America. We got some papaya as well. We got some dates from the Middle East. We got some flax seeds from who knows where. Some maple syrup from our buddies up north. What else needs to be said that you cannot follow a vegan diet in nature? Also worth mentioning, no significant source of nutrition in this meal in the context of vitamins and minerals. No fat-soluble vitamins, and all the minerals are likely bound to the phytic acid in the oats. Oats are very high in phytic acid. Uh, unless you ferment oats for a period of a week to a week and a half, the phytic acid amount isn't going to be lowered enough to allow your body to absorb the minerals. If I lived in a cold climate, I would take steaming hot showers every morning because that is my guilty pleasure. And while we're talking about it, so many of you guys ask me what shampoo and conditioner I use. I wash my hair about once a week as I find it feels its healthiest when I minimally wash it. Also, it saves waste not to use hair products as often. I also always wash my hair in cold water because cold water helps to seal your hair cuticle, making it lay smoothly. So when I want a really hot shower, I'll wash my body with hot water and then turn it to cold when I get my hair wet and a good quality vegan shampoo and conditioner is so key too. But it can be hard to find a shampoo and conditioner that works for everyone's hair. I could easily recommend a shampoo brand that works for my hair but might not work for yours. So I use Function of Beauty which has a great solution. A unique formula for your unique hair. Function of Beauty creates custom shampoo and conditioner for your hair type and hair goals. I mean, I haven't seen any hot showers in nature, but this is understandable. Uh, considering your crazy vegan diet gives you hypothyroid, I'll allow it. I do find it funny that Nordic people would literally take an ice bath in the morning. I don't think vegans will be doing that anytime soon. What do you guys think of me 
doing stuff that these vegan girls do in these videos. How ridiculous would it be if I went in my shower in a towel and did a little twirl and all that type of stuff and then came out? I just think it's that there was a freely did a video on Ravana and she had a picture of her and Ravana lying in a bed together. You know, there's definitely some discrepancies compared to what women are allowed to do and what men are allowed to do. And what's with the obsession with cosmetic products in these vegans? I mean, I personally have some cosmetic products that I make for myself, like lip balm and deodorant and toothpaste, but that's so my teeth don't smell and I don't smell. These women, you would think that with their amazing vegan diets, they wouldn't need all these hygiene products to look as pretty as Frankie the face. If I lived in a cold climate, I would make my green salad meals warming. I know I've been doing this a lot lately, but it's worth mentioning here that adding some boiled cake That roundup looks real tasty! ...makes the meal much more comforting on cold days and is also more filling too. This day, I had a big bed of dark greens with chopped bell pepper, cabbage, and kimchi. Then I added in a cup of boiled basmati rice as well as a side of baked potatoes and sweet potatoes. I'm on a tahini kick lately so I added 2-3 to three tablespoons of tahini over the salad with a tablespoon of maple syrup and a dash of cayenne pepper. This is a super delicious, nourishing, and easy meal to prep. Find whatever veggies you can get on hand and that you enjoy, load it with some tahini and grains or potatoes, and call it a meal. This cold climate concept is still eclipsing my mind, but as we said earlier, vegans are a little bit confused and, and that is understandable. I mean, starting with kale, green vegetables, bell peppers. I haven't seen any growing in my backyard in the New York winter. However, however, you know, if you want to dump a bottle of kimchi on some rice with some tahini and maybe some potatoes, by all means, that sounds incredibly disgusting. And not only that, it is devoid of nutrition. But notice how these vegans have to always put incredible amounts of seasoning on their foods to make it palatable. As someone who has some sort of culinary background, I understand that by combining certain things like fat, salt, acidity, different flavors and textures, you can make an inedible food actually taste good. But vegans do that for every single meal, and it's pretty crazy how they all use similar things. If, if you don't see tahini in a vegan video, then uh, the world might implode. But as with all vegan meals, no significant source of fat soluble vitamins. It's really just carbohydrates and energy. If I lived in a cold climate, I would enjoy a lot of soups. This night, we made a big coconut milk potato lentil soup for family dinner. We normally make fresh coconut milk from scratch with local coconuts here in Hawaii. I can get down with this vegan music, guys. I don't know about you guys. This is the only fun I get to have. For the sake of this video, since I wanted to make food that is typically available in colder climates, I used a few cans of coconut milk so you can see which ones we bought. Andrew boiled a couple cups of red lentils on the side and then added it to the soup once it was all cooked and mashed. He added lots of veggies like broccoli, cauliflower, carrots, celery, mushrooms, and onion with lots of fresh minced garlic and spices. I'll put the full recipe to this healthy and whole foods warm creamy soup in the description box of this video. It was super delicious. It's funny because I'm doing this video about if I lived in a cold climate how I would eat, but since we moved to a cooler part of the island here in Maui and it's winter time, I actually have been wearing cozy socks and taking hot showers every day. A warm Warm soup at the end of these rainy days has been just perfect lately. So cheers to enjoying warm soup from across the world to wherever you are. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next video. I actually looked up what the climate is in Maui this time of year. It's like 65, 70 degrees. So if you're cold when it's 65, 70 degrees outside, there might be something wrong with your health, perhaps related to your diet. But as with the other meals, we're consuming things that are not exclusive to winter. There's no significant amount of fat-soluble vitamins. It's just completely unrealistic. Uh, you know, I think if they did actually use only grain foods and only foods that were preserved in the winter, I mean, they would probably get scurvy. Uh, but outside of that, they wouldn't actually be obtaining more nutrition by consuming these vegetables uh, than they would if they were just consuming grains outside of the anti-scorbutic, the vitamin C properties of the fresh vegetables. And what she didn't show you after that dinner, come on, let's be honest. We've seen every single vegan snack at least three to four times per day, and she didn't include any snacks here. So she's definitely being deceitful to her viewers, and we know vegans are willing to be deceitful. We know they're willing to lie about what foods they've been eating, so who knows if she's even adhered to a vegan diet. And looking at this day of eating as a whole, it's very apparent why vegans have insignificant blood levels of vitamin D and DHA. 
They're not consuming enough fat. They're not consuming any sources of linoleic acid, linolenic acid to have possibly some potential conversion. So it's, it's really a crazy diet. And this is ultimately why all of these vegans fail. It's very, very clear, regardless of how you do a vegan diet, it doesn't work. And it's funny that people try to make the same arguments every time they come up with something else. Oh, they didn't eat enough fresh produce. They combined the wrong foods. They did this. They did that. They didn't supplement. They didn't open their can of coconut milk with a vegan can opener. Whatever BS these vegans want to make up to try to justify their crazy diet and lifestyle. Outcome data per Mr. Vegan Gains. Outcome data is the most significant thing. And we know the percent rate of vegans failing is significant, especially in these past few weeks. If you guys know, you know, just three vegans this week, Raw Vana, Tish Wonders, Raw Alignment. What's next? The whole vegan YouTube community is collapsing. And Frankie Boy is here to welcome all of these lovely vegan ladies and gentlemen to the carnivore cult. So thank you guys for watching. If you guys would like to support the channel, please like, subscribe, share the video, hit the bell icon. If you guys do want to support me and the channel and get personalized question support, my Patreon is down below in the comments. Uh, there's also my Amazon shop where I do offer nutrient-dense foods. So any of you vegans looking to include some cod liver oil, some vitamin D3, get those blood levels up a little bit, you can check that out. I'm on Twitter, guys. I'm on Instagram. Really funny cartoons. I'm posting on both. Uh, posting studies as well, stuff related to the carnivore diet. If you guys do want to reach out to me in regards to improving your overall health, you can send me an email, franka2fano at gmail.com, or contact me through the form on my website below, frank-tufano.com. You guys enjoy the rest of your weekend.